Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 1 from the Jan 2010 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so they tell us that the following balances were taken from the books of Woodruff Enterprise, a small proprietor, on April 30th, 2009. So they give us this nice long list of balances here. I'm not going to go through all of these now. Let's actually take a look at what they want us to do and then we'll take a look at the items. So the first thing they want us to do is to prepare the trial balance for Woodruff Enterprise. The amount for capital must be included 14 marks. Okay, so let's pull up our trial balance on this side and be sure to head up your statements properly. Woodruff Enterprises, name of the entity, trial balance, name of the statement or the item you are preparing and the appropriate date as at April 30th or 30th April 2009. Okay, let's take a look at those items one by one now. So motor vehicles is the first item up. And as you know, motor vehicles is an asset and assets have debit balances. So we're going to start off by putting motor vehicles in the debit column. The next item up in the list of balances they give us is bad debts. Bad debts is an expense and just like, ex oh, sorry, just like assets, expenses also have debit balances. Now, returns inwards is the next item given to us in that list. That's a contra revenue. It decreases sales and hence also has a debit balance. Next, we have commission received. Now, commission received is a revenue and revenues have credit balances. So we're going to put that as the first item in our credit column. Then we have cash on hand, 41,100. Cash on hand is an asset. And as we said above, assets have debit balances. So you're going to see that in the debit column in the trial balance. Next. We have returns outwards, 4,500. Now, 40. returns outwards is a reduction to purchases. Purchases is an expense which has a debit balance. A reduction to a debit balance is itself a credit item. So, returns outwards has a credit balance. Next, purchases. Well, we just said purchases is an expense and expenses have debit balances. We're going to put that there. The next item up is sales. So, sales is our primary revenue item. And as we said before, revenue items have credit balances. Next, we have bank overdraft. Bank overdraft is a liability. It's where we owe the bank money. And liabilities go in the credit column. Next, we have carriage inwards and carriage outwards. So both of those are expenses. So we're going to put them both in the debit column. We also have advertising expenses. And as the name says, it is an expense item. So we're going to put that in the debit column as well. The next item up is the provision for bad debts, which is a contra asset. Its function is to reduce the debtors or accounts receivable balance in the balance sheet. Assets, sorry, debtors or accounts receivable is an asset. Assets have debit balances. So if you want to show a reduction to a debit item, you must, well, the reduction will come in the form of a credit item. So the provision for bad debts has a credit balance because it is a contra asset. Next, we have the debtors item. So debtors is the asset. And as we said, assets have credit balances. Following that, we have creditors or accounts, re accounts payable, sorry. Creditors is a liability. We owe people money and liabilities have credit balances. Next up, we have equipment, which itself is an asset. And of course, we said assets have debit balances. Salaries is the next item up. That is an expense. An expense, sorry, expenses have debit balances. The next item we're seeing here is long-term loan. So that is a liability. A loan, any type of loan is a liability. Okay, next we have opening stock and miscellaneous expenses. So opening stock is an asset that will have a debit balance and miscellaneous expenses is an expense which itself will also have a debit balance. Now, we are missing capital from this trial balance. The question did say to put the amount for capital in the trial balance. They did not give us an amount for capital. So guess what we have to do? We have to simply apply the basic accounting equation. Assets or debit items minus liabilities or credit items is equal to capital. So you're going to add up everything in this column here, add up everything in this column here, and then you're going to subtract, find the difference, which of course will be the capital figure of 14700. And when you total both sides of your trial balance, you get the same total, 781800. Okay, so if you have any questions about that item, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you whenever chance. Let's take a look at part B. All right, so part B is telling us the following entries appeared in the sales day book of Woodruff Enterprise for the month of April. So we have a sales day book, which we know is also known as the sales journal and records only credit sales of stock. 
So we are seeing four transactions and two names. V Lucky on the 1st and the 29th and M Davis on the 5th and the 11th. We have some invoice numbers, no folios, and we have some amounts. Now what they want us to do is to actually post the entries from the sales day book into the appropriate ledger, well, ledger accounts. Okay, so what we're gonna do, of course, is anybody from, sorry, to whom we sell on credit will, of course, have an item here in the sales day book or sales journal, because this is the journal that records only credit sales. So anybody inside of here will be sold to on credit and hence will be a debtor. And debtor's personal accounts are found in the sales ledger. So we're gonna open a T account for VLucky. So VLucky's account looks like any other regular T account, and of course, it's a personal account of a debtor which is found in the sales ledger. Now, usually sales ledger is found, you, you kind of write it above, you don't write any name for the account, but I just, I just put it here for the sake of illustration. Okay, now in the Lucky's account, you're gonna find a couple of items. You're gonna find the credit sales, right? The credit sales from the sales journal on the first, you have a credit sale to V Lucky of 2000, and then you have another credit sale on the 29th to V Lucky of 6450. Both of those are going to go on the debit side of V Lucky's account. Okay, now why the debit side? Because when you make a credit sale to someone, they end up owing you money. That's an asset to you. When, when an asset increases, you have to debit the asset account. Now, this is a debit to VLucky's account. Some students think that because you put sales, you write the word sales on the debit side of an account, you're debiting sales. That's not the case. This is not a debit to sales. This is a debit to VLucky, and the details column has the word sales in it, which indicates that sales is the other account affected by the transaction. Again, this is not a debit to V to sales account. This is a debit to V Lucky's account where sales is the details. Okay, so now all we have to do is balance off the account. How do we do that? Well, we add up all the transactions on this side. There are none here. So all that's going to go happen on this side is going to put balance carried down and it's going to be the same as the total on that side. But the total there is 8,450. So the balance carried down is going to be 8,450. And that's going to be brought down on the debit side, like a regular asset. Now we're going to pull up M. Davis's account. So of course, M. Davis is also a debtor. So M. Davis's personal account will be found in the sales ledger. So what do we put in M. Davis's account? Well, we have two credit sales. So we have one on the 5th, one on the 11th. And just like the same thing we did with VLucky, the exact same thing is going to happen here. The two amounts for credit sales are going to go on the debit side of M. Davis's account. And again, it's going to say sales. And again, this is not a debit to sales. This is an entry on the debit side of M. Davis's account. It's a debit, or these are debits to M. Davis's account. Sales as the details, as the other account affected by the transaction. Now, what do we do? Well, we have no other entries that we know of, no other transactions. So we just total up that side. We put that as the balance carried down from the credit side and the total and bring it down on the debit side. And that's it for this question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question one from the Jan 2010 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PUA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.